Drop, cover, and hold on. BC spends a, a lot of time teaching kids what to do when an earthquake hits. But what happens when it's not a drill, when the ground really starts to shake? Often people go into a panic or go into denial, thinking the tremors are really just a, a big truck passing by or some nearby construction. And those precious seconds lost can mean all the difference in the world. So some engineers at UBC want to give people a few seconds more an early warning system that would detect earth, earthquakes 10, 20, or even 30 seconds before the ground actually starts shaking. So here's how it works. Motion sensors that detect earthquake waves are drilled two meters into the ground. If movement is detected, a signal is sent back to a central hub and the system is activated. An alarm goes off in buildings connected to the network, giving people more time to take cover. Now, so far, the system is being piloted in 50 Catholic schools throughout the Lower Mainland, but the researchers hope, uh, once the bugs are worked out, that the system can be implemented right across B.C. So here to talk more about this is CBC meteorologist and seismologist, seismologist tough word to say, uh, Johanna Wagstaff, thanks so much for being here. Now, when we're looking at this early detection warning system, 10, 20, 30 seconds, what do you do with that time? How, how important yeah. is it to have that extra few seconds. It doesn't sound like a lot, Andrew, but believe it or not, this is a massive amount of lead time and it does save lives. That's enough time to get into a safe position, especially if you know what to do when that alarm sounds or when that shaking starts. And it's not only enough time to protect yourself, which is uh, the leading cause of casualties and uh, injuries in an earthquake, collapsing buildings and falling heavy objects. But in the future, this could also mean shutting down transit systems, closing bridges, closing tunnels, even pausing surgeries. So this does have the uh, ability to save lives. And I believe this is really the only method out there uh, for early earthquake warning. We can't predict earthquakes. I don't think we'll ever be able to, but we can predict the shaking after an earthquake happens. And that's how this system works. Uh, we start off with an initial P wave that's sent out once that earthquake begins. It's a compressional wave, so it moves side to side and it doesn't do much damage. It's much faster than the secondary wave that comes next. That's what causes the shaking. And there's a lead, a lag time between that first wave and that second wave. And again, it can be anywhere from a couple of seconds to up to a minute, depending on how far away that epicenter is. But again, it does save lives, Andrew. And you know, you really hit the point home how early warning is really like the holy grail of earthquake yes. detection. But this is not the only such program out there. You know, if You're I think right. of China, I think of Japan. So how does this compare to those other programs? Well, the basics are, or the science is exactly the same. Again, uh, triggering that initial alarm from that first wave and then giving you lead time before the damaging waves follow. But there is a difference, and I want to uh, uh, take you to a clip from uh, the director, uh, Carlos Ventura, of this project from uh, UBC uh, Earthquake Engineering Research facility and here's how the two are different. What we are doing here is developing a system that is very reliable that confirms that that P wave is in, the, in fact related to an earthquake and not to construction activity etc. And that's why our system is somewhat different than other systems. So rather than one sensor at one location, like Japan or what they're working on in California, there'll be multiple sensors at each location, and that can help verify and reduce false alarms from nearby noise. So then what's the timeline here? We talked about how this is going to be test piloted in 50 yeah. Catholic schools across the Lower Mainland. How long until we see it BC-wide? Well, the testing is happening now. In fact, uh, all of those sensors have been implemented into the schools. By the end of the month, uh, the team hopes that this project will be complete. Testing will be done and it'll be ready to go for uh, future earthquakes. Uh, there's a lot more though to be done. This is only the, be the beginning stages of uh, a province-wide or even a south coast uh, wide uh, uh, installation and uh, here's what uh, the director or Dr. Ventura says is the next step. There has to be more cooperation between institutions and at some point there has to be an institution that is in charge for that and monitoring earthquakes and that to me is the next step. So really just the beginning of a huge project. I mean, this project costs hundreds of million dollars in Japan. It's likely to cost 50 to $60 million in California. Uh, but again, the research is there that it does save lives. So the initial stage is a good one. And again, I, I'm really excited about this project. Yeah, big cost, but so much they stand to gain, of course. Exactly. Johanna Wagstaff, thanks a lot. Thank you.